Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic, and we are really excited about the release of our new Roots Magic 9 software. And I'd like to spend a few minutes here just kind of showing you what's new in Roots Magic 9. Now, rather than go into a lot of detail on each and every one of these new features, I'm going to kind of highlight these new features to kind of give you an overview of what the feature is. And then we're going to have individual shorter videos uh, covering each one of the individual features in more detail. So if there's something that you see that you are really interested in, look for the short video uh, to go into more detail on that feature. So let's just jump right in. The first feature I want to show you that's new in Roots Magic 9 is what's called associations. Now, if you're involved with genealogy, you may also know, know that as the fan concept, which is friends, associates, and neighbors. You may call it cluster genealogy. The, the idea behind this is being able to show how two people that are not family related are related and being able to use that information to uh, let you do more research and find out how how other people's relationships may actually affect your own family. So let's just jump right in here. What I want to do is I'm going to I want to select a person right here. And one of the things I can do is when I say add, in addition to the usual add individual spouse, parents and child, we now have a new item called add association. So I'm going to say I want to add an association here to Vinaya. And Roots Magic is going to bring up the add association screen. And from this screen, I can select the two people that are related somehow and choose how they are related. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select association type. And I'm going to go ahead and choose friends. Now there's a, a number of these that are built in and you can go in and actually create your own association types. So I'm going to go ahead and say that these two are friends, select that. And I've already highlighted Vinaya, so she's already, or he's already selected here. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick another person and I'm just going to pick somebody here at random. Let's pick Hannah Hoyt. And so Hannah Hoyt, so Vinaya and Hannah are now going to be friends and I can enter the date, the sort date, uh, the place. The date can be a date range. So they were friends from this date to this date. I can enter the place, the place details, description. I can enter a note and I can switch the roles for the two people. In this case, friends, they're both friends of each other. So switching the roles doesn't really make a difference. I'll show you a little bit where that might make a difference. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And so now Vinaya and and this other person are now friends. Well, if I want to see my associations, we have a new main view on the, on the person view, on the people view called association view. And when I select that, right here is the one I just added. And the relationship is friends. So the first, first person is a friend, there they are. Second person's a friend. If there were dates and places, they could have that. I can sort on any of these columns. I can come up here uh, and enter something in this search box to filter this list in a number of different ways. I can edit either the person one or the person two from right here, or I can edit the relationship, which just brings up that same screen we had right here. Now, as I mentioned, you can in enter any number of things. So like I might have a relationship, might be employment, where one person's the employer and one's the employee. And this is, this is the type of thing, employer, employee, where it might, I might need to switch those two roles. So if I switch the two roles, it changes the employer and the employee back and forth. So it switches them. Uh, but in here, I can enter all of these, I can enter all these other items as well. But you can enter things um, such as employment, friends, neighbors, uh, education. You can have a teacher, student. You, you can keep track of, of enslaved people. Uh, so you can have this person was the enslaver and this person was the enslaved person. And so you can keep track of that as well. Um, now we also have a couple of reports, uh, new reports that are available 
for associations, and those will be in the in the other video where we show you specifically how all of this can work. But let's just say one of those association reports will show you, you pick any two people and it will show you how they're related. Now they may not be related directly, you may not have an association directly, but there may be a two or three levels. So it might say this person uh, has an association with this person, who has an association with this person, who has association with that second person. And it'll show you that, that chain of relationships. The other one is where you pick any one person and it will show you all of their relationships to any level that you choose. So it's kind of like a descendancy list, except it's showing you based on these relationships here as well. Now, the other place that these, that these relationships are going to show up is going to be on the edit person screen. So when you're on the edit person screen, um, here's, here's that neighbor association that I just added. And so you can see it's right here. And I have all the same fields. I can edit this association right here rather than having to do it from that association view. But what's nice about being able to do it here from the person's edit screen is associations not only have dates, places, descriptions, but you can also have your sources, your media, and your tasks for that association as well. And associations will have sentences and so these also can appear in family group sheets, narrative reports, and some of the other standard built-in uh, reports as well. So again, here's, the, here's an employment, an employment association. So you can add, edit, delete associations from here just the same way you do from the main screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. The next new feature in version eight, uh, or in version nine, that I wanna show you is the new enhanced color coding. So in, in Roots Magic in the past, we've always had color coding and it will show on the various views and the lists. Um, but now, here's one thing that's new. When you point at the color, right there you can see wars, revolutionary war. Okay, if I point at blue, wars, civil war. Green is going to be World War I. So I can, I can now, actually label what the different colors are. So another, a quick way of getting into the color coding is rather than going into the add, the edit person menu, I can just double click on the color code for a person and it will bring up my color coding. Now, now this looks kind of similar to what you have in eight, but it looks somewhat different as well. You'll notice right here that I can give my color code set a name. I, I'm, let's, I'm color, calling my color coding wars. And then each individual color, I can give it a name. So in, in this case, I wanted to call red revolutionary war, green world war one, blue civil war, purple world war two. If, as I added other wars, I can assign them to different colors as well. Now, this part of the screen right here works just like it did in the past. You select any group of people, ancestors, descendants, people from a list or whatever, and you can apply the color that's selected over here. You just pick any color over here and you can apply that color to whichever people are selected. And it works just like it has always has in the past. Uh, you can assign colors that don't have a name. If, you, if, if it has a name, great. If it doesn't, it, you don't have to. Now here's, here's my favorite feature. One of the things you can now do is you can have 10 different color code sets. So in the past, if you had color coding for some set of data and you wanted to temporarily color code stuff, you had to wipe out your color coding you had before and you set the new color coding and then when you were done, you had to go back and reset it back to whatever it was. You had to go select the people and all of that. Now you don't have to do that anymore. I can just come in here and I can select a different color code set. This is one I called ancestor lines and I gave four of the colors, the, co the names. And so I just say, I wanna change that color, the current color code set to that, click okay, bam. And I'm now using this new color code set. When I hover over it, you'll see ancestor lines, paternal grandfather. I can come down here, paternal grandmother, purple is maternal grandmother. And of course the, the blue, that's paternal grandmother. And so I can go in and I can 
create, again, like I say, I can create up to 10 different color codes. If I collect, say I want to do this third color code set, I can come in here and I can give it a name. Maybe I'm still only temporary, so I might not want to give it a name. And maybe I don't even care about giving it, um, giving the colors labels, but I can. And so when I set color code set three, I close and nobody's color code is set with color code set three. So you can just switch back and forth between any set of color coding you want. I'm going to go back to ancestor lines. That's the one I'll leave it with. And there you have it. It's set, you're setting the color code lines there as well. And you can do things like search based on color code and, it, and pick which color code set. Um, all, kinds, all kinds of fun stuff that you can do there. Okay, let's go ahead and one of the things that you may have seen if, you, if you're looking at the screen is we have a new menu item over here on the left called tools. And when I select tools, it's going to bring up a list of a bunch of tools that are built into Roots Magic. Now, a lot of these are tools that are already in Roots Magic and you've played with them and used them before. They're in various views, people view, place views, whatever. And we categorize those here. So you've got your, you've got your database tools here. You've got person tools, group tools, fact, place, media. But some of these tools are new. Some of these tools are new. So like the database tools, these are already all in there, compact, rebuild. This just gives you a good place to keep them, keep them together, keep all your tools together. So if you want to just quick way to get to them, you come in here and then whichever is highlighted, it tells you about it. You click run the selected tool and it runs whatever tool is highlighted. Okay, the ones that I'm going to, I'm just going to quickly mention the new, the new ones. And again, we will have separate videos to go into more detail, rearrange children and rearrange spouses. In Roots Magic uh, 8, you can rearrange the children or spouses for a family or a person. This actually lets you rearrange the spouses of every person in the file or rearrange the children of every person in the file automatically. And it warns you, you be careful because if you don't have a birth date, you know, they may sort to the bottom and you, you may not like that. So it's warning you there. Okay. One thing people have been asking for for years is the ability to gr delete a group of people or delete a bunch of people, like delete a line. Well, we now have that in here in the tools. You can delete everyone in a group. So you just come in here and select which group you want. And then when you run the selected tool, it'll give you a warning. You know, do you really want to do that? And it'll tell you how many people are potentially going to be deleted. But that will delete everybody in that group. Okay, so... Rather than, rather than have you select people and then hope that you selected the right people and didn't accidentally select any wrong people, you basically can just delete a group. So you can go in and look at that group and make sure it's exactly who you want before you do that. We also have the ability to let you combine groups. So you, go, you can go in and select two groups, enter a new group name because it's going to combine those two into this new group and then you select how you want them combined and again we'll talk about that in a, in a separate video that's just kind of a show you show you kind of what what's new in here okay you can also now change a fact type for everyone so if you've ever wanted to go in here and change uh, baptisms to christenings for example you can do that, select, run the selected tool. Again, it's going to ask you to confirm that, but that will change every baptism you have in your file to christening. Okay, we also have the ability to remove a particular fact type from everyone. So if you ever had uh, a file you imported and it had a bunch of reference numbers that you didn't want, you can now select reference number, fact type, run the selected tool, and Roots Magic will go and remove that fact type from everybody in your file. Again, a lot of these have been in here or in here before. The last one I'm going to show you is this enhanced properties report. Now, you've always had the, the ability to see the properties right here, and it just shows you how many people, families, events, the basic stuff. Okay, well, now we have an enhanced properties report that when you do that, it gives you the number of people, names, families, all of that, but it's showing you additional, like for people, it's showing you how many are male, female, how many have an unknown sex, how many alternate names you have, how many families you have with only one parent or families with no children, and so on. Events, you've got how many are proven, disproven, disputed, how many witnesses you have, how many events you have that don't have a source. Um, 
How many associations? How many associations only have one person? They don't have how many places unused, um, how many place details, how many temples, how many places you have that are not geocoded. Some of these items uh, have the ability to click to view a list. If you want to see a list of um, your unused media, okay, you got 72, you've got one unused media, I can click on that and boom, there's my unused media. So. Uh, it, it gives you a little bit more uh, information about your database properties and allows you to kind of drill in a little bit deeper uh, on some of those. Okay, let's go ahead and show you another feature. This is a feature we've actually had a lot of, a lot of requests for, and that is um, on, when you're in the edit person screen now, you'll notice that there's a little side menu over here now, and you can actually click the little arrow if you want to see that see the actual text for what they are. But the, this, the first tab is the, your edit screen as you've always known and loved it. The second is your media album for the person. Okay, so you can come in here and, and bring up, let me go ahead and bring up a person that's got a little bit more. This actually will bring up all the media for the person. So on the edit screen, you've got the media and you can go see the media for each individual thing. But now you can go in and you can see all the media attached to the person, to the person's families, to the person's facts, and to the person's citations, whether the citations are attached to them or to one of their facts, you can see. And right now it's showing all media, but if you click on the little drop list, you can see it's breaking down every single fact that the person has, um, every single citation for every fact. So this list can actually get pretty long if you've got a whole lot of data. Now, if a particular piece of information has media attached to it, there'll be a little asterisk in front of it. So as I scroll down, I can see the military fact has media. The citation for the military fact has media. Um, this miscellaneous fact has media. And if I click on the item, it filters the list to show me only the, only the, uh, the media for, in this case, for the miscellaneous fact. And the, the search, the search filter works, works regardless of whether you're looking at all media or whether you're looking at specific media, you can still use the filtering uh, there as well. You can also now come in and sort the media and when you do that, it shows you all the media for that particular, you know, that general person or that fact or whatever. If there's more than one uh, image, it allows you to come in here and rearrange that media in whatever, in whatever order you want that media to be in. Okay. Um, other, other than that, the media, it works very similar to the way the actual media, media tab uh, works there as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you in, one, another new feature under search. And this, this feature is probably, probably the feature that's been asked for for the longest amount of time going all the way back into the family origins days. And that is a feature we now call saved searches. So when you go into the advanced search, the saved searches are not in the not, not in the basic search here. It's in the, it's in the, the advanced search because that's the one that's, that's all, you know, allows you to do everything. So normally you'd come in here, you'd click find and you'd enter, you'd enter some criteria. Okay. Well now when you click on saved searches, you can now say, I want to create a new saved search. And if you do that, if you've already got a saved ser a search defined over here, as I do, birthplace contains Boston, there it already pre-fills that in for me. I can change it or whatever and click OK. And let's say I just click OK, and I'm going to say born in Boston. Okay, I'm going to click OK. I now have a search criteria born in Boston. I can come in and edit, delete, and rename these search criteria. If I want to use a criteria I've saved. I just select it, click do search, and there's my birthplace contains Pennsylvania. Now these saved criteria are available in, in a bunch of other places. So for example, if I come up, um, if I'm in the, if I'm on the people view right here, and let's say I want to come into the, 
um, I want to come down here and do under tools, I want to bring up the problem list. And this is actually another new feature that I can show you while I'm actually doing this. And that is, is on the problem list, you can now choose a group of people. You can choose to select which people you actually want for uh, the problem list, the problem search to be performed on. In the past, it was just everybody in the database, but I can come in here and click on that and I can select everyone. I can say select from a list or I can select a group. If I say select from a list, it brings up my, my screen where I can select the people and new under here, under mark, I can also mark people or unmark people by the saved searches. That brings up the saved searches. If I wanna select everybody born in Pennsylvania, boom, it tells me it's marked 12 people. So now, if, if I go down there, the, the people in, and I can say select, okay. And so now if I run this problem search, it's only going to do the problem search on those 12 people. Okay, I'll just hop out of here right now. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, as long as we're talking about saved items, let's go to tasks, okay. One of the things in tasks is to be able to filter tasks. And if you've done any filtering of the tasks, you know that there's a billion different options here. Um, you have the ones on the content, so you can say the start date is, you know, only they only have a start date of this and, and or end date or edit date, or the details contain this or results contain that or that, you know, or, or only show with a certain priority. And then you also have this filter based on links which is where you can go say, only show me tasks that are attached to this person or this family or this event or this place or you know any of those kind of things. These can get very, very complicated. And so what we've done is we've also added saved filters. Okay, so if, if I want to, if I've created a filter, no matter how fancy or how simple, I can say, show me the saved filters. Again, I can go create new ones, edit, delete, rename, and I can, let's just look at this one. It's, I just called it highest priority. Um, it's basically only priority one and only it, it has to, the, the details have to contain the word the. I did that to filter it a little bit farther. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to apply this filter that I've already used, I just go in, say save, fil save filters, select that, apply the filter, and there we go. This is my list of tasks that are priority one that have the word the in the in the details there and so like if i went back into the save filters i could edit that i could take this out and say don't filter by task details okay so now i've changed it now if i apply the filter you'll see there's actually more people because there were a handful of them that were priority one that didn't have the word the in it anyway so so that that's another uh Time-saving time saving feature that we've added in version nine is that ability. There's no limit to how many of these filters, how many of these filters that you can, that you can create. Okay, I'm gonna show you another feature here. I'm gonna go into citations and I'm gonna pick up, just I'll pick this citation. And when you're looking at a citation or media or tasks or addresses, over on the right side, it, you'll, you'll, you'll usually see a thing that's showing you how many places that citation, media item, task, address, repository, how many places that's used. And if you click on that, in, most, in, in version eight, basically it gives you a list and that's it. Well, now you now have the ability to, from any one of those, like I say, places, sources, citations, media, task, address, repositories. You now have the ability to add another link to this citation or media or whatever, or remove this link from that citation or uh, edit the link. You know, I can change it to a different person or whatever without having to delete it first, or I can actually just edit the item. So if I'm looking at this person, I click that and I am now can edit the person, it selects the person. If I happen to be on marriage and I click edit, brings up the person, except it highlights the marriage fact. Same thing with uh, death. If, I'm, if, I'm looking, if I wanna see this Elizabeth Wade's death, 
that is using this particular citation. I just clicked the little pencil, and now there's that particular, even though there's two death facts, it knows which one it is, and I can actually look and edit the information for that citation directly from this screen. And again, like I say, I, that, this is now available in places. It's in available media, tasks, addresses, and repositories as well. Okay. Kind of like I said, I'm kind of going through these real, real fast. Okay, the last kind of big feature that I'm going to show you here is going to be is going to be groups. And if you are in groups, I'm going to go ahead and over here on the side, I'm going to select this little groups tab, and you can see the groups. Well, in the past, if I clicked on add to add a group, it just asked you for the name of the group. You'd enter the name of a group, and then you could select manually the people that you want in it. Well, groups are a little bit better now in that when I click on it, I can enter the name of the group and I'm going to call this uh, super group and call it whatever you want. And by default, it's a free form group, which is the way groups have always worked. And if it's a free form group, I can go in here now and I can select the people I want. And again, I can, I can do it using a saved search if I want. I can click a saved search and select the people uh, that I want. But the new option is this one, saved criteria. And so if I want to do this, I can go in and I can say, I want this group to be saved criteria. So I'm going to set the criteria and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select birth, place, contains, Boston. Okay. And this can be as fancy of a, of a criteria as you want. It's not limited to just that. So I did that and you'll see now that it's showing me eight people were selected via criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now my super group, as I move through, as I move through, or if I go into, if I go into my people list right here and pick that super group, okay, there's my people. There's my eight people that were born in Boston. Okay, now here's one, here's one thing, and this is, we, we, we met, met, consciously made this decision for performance reasons. Um, if I go in here, if I go to somebody here, I'm going to go to Hazel, and I'm going to change Hazel's birthplace to Boston. Okay, so I'm changing Hazel's birthplace to Boston here. Okay, when I go in and look at my super group, I'm going to go ahead and edit it. You'll see it still says eight people. Okay, so even though, even though this group uses a criteria, it's not going to automatically, every time somebody changes, it's not going to automatically add or remove them from a group because performance-wise, that, that'll kill the performance of the program. But you have a button right here, refresh people. And so I don't have to go in, I don't have to go in and re, you know, in the past, if you added people that would match some criteria, you had to go back into the group, you had to clear everybody out, you had to then re-enter the criteria and click it and do that. Now I don't have to do that because it remembers the criteria, so all I have to do is come and refresh the people, and so now nine people are selected. So... You can go in and you can make whatever modifications you want to your database. Just come back into the group, say refresh the people, and that group of people, uh, that group of people now has your updated, is updated based on your criteria there. Again, we will have, we'll have another video that will go into a lot more detail on this as well. Okay, let me show you a couple of real quick things before we wrap up. Um, here's one. This is something that's been a popular request. Over here on the side, we now have the family list. And so as you move from person to person, it's going to show you the person's spouses, children, parents, and siblings, all, all just in a nice little compact list. You can always see it up here, but we had a lot of people who enjoyed this from older versions where you can just just all, all right there, all in one spot. Um, and if you click on the little arrow, if you click on the person, it just highlights them in the list. But if you click on the little arrow, it switches to them here in the main view. Okay, another thing that's new is we have um, 
we have completely we have completely redone the note editor so we've improved the performance we've improved uh, just the way it works overall um, we know that the the uh, the older note editor which we had to use at the time uh, has some issues this new note editor is much faster much cleaner um, we've also added to the note editor spell checking so you can bring it up uh, it, it works it works just like a your typical spell checker it'll show you the word that's whether it's there or not you can ignore it once ignore it all or you can add it to the dictionary or you can select the a suggestion and change it once or change it in every place right there um, this dictionary this spell check this spell checker uses the spell checker that's built into your operating system so if you're using windows it's using the windows spell check engine if you're on the Mac it's using the Mac spell check engine so if you want to actually edit that spell check dictionary you just go in and edit the the Windows or the Mac spell check dictionary and we provide we'll provide information on on where those files actually are so that you can so that you can do that um, another another feature we've we've put in here um, is the uh, is the ability to create the the plain old HTML websites so under publish you can go in and select the plain old HTML websites these are the ones from like version 6 of roots magic and earlier um, we've we've done a little bit of enhancing to them but it's basically it's basically to give those people who are used to just being able to generate just a generic HTML with the CSS uh, styling um, sites it's just it's just the ability to be able to to do that as well uh, again okay the last thing I want to show you is I'm going to go to the the person list screen oh and I'm going to go back to everybody okay one of the th one of the things that people some people haven't gotten used to um, uh, is, is for example if I come in here and want to search for somebody if I enter let's let's say LA okay if I enter LA it's giving me everybody that has LA in the last name now this can be good if you're looking for something son and you type in SEN or SON it'll give you all of those okay but there are times when you may not want you may want it to to basically search or filter exactly what you type and so all you have to do now is do the quote so if I do the the little the little quote mark L a okay you're now seeing what kind of what we used to call incremental search it's not really an incremental search because it's filtering but you're seeing the only the people whose last name starts with LA so when you put the quote mark when you put a quote mark in a search field now as you as you type it basically is has to be an exact match it's going to have to match exactly whatever you type so that's just a that's just a little a little thing we put in there now there's a num a, a number of other small you know cool little features that we've added here that I, I just don't have time to go into each and every one uh, a lot of those are there for there for you guys to find and and enjoy so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little short overview of what is new in Roots Magic 9. And as I mentioned, if there's something that you've seen that you really want to see more information on or, or need more details, look for some of these uh, individual separate videos that we're, gonna, that we're doing that will cover an individual feature. That way we don't have, uh, have videos like this being, being two or three hours long. So again, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll talk to you again soon.